United We Start, a group discussion of activists, bloggers, authors and other leaders in the independent media to inform educate listeners in various topics. Join us every second Saturday of the month at 10 to 12 a.m. Pacific Time, uh, which is 18 to 20 hours GMT. Join us. We're looking forward to meeting you. Welcome to the United, you know, United We Start Roundtable. You have myself, Alan James, from Open Your Mind Radio. You have Detlev from Wake News Radio. You have Matt Navarro from the New World Old Report and Michael from the Wake News Radio. And our special guest on the show is uh, Thomas Williams from the Truth, Honor and Integrity Show. Now, we were planning to have Steve on as well. Um, I don't know where Steve is. He might jump in. On the show, Steve from o Open Your Mind Radio, my co-host. Um, but I don't know sign of Steve at the moment, but we'll see what happens anyway. You might jump in later in the show. So, again, thanks to everybody who's tuning in to the United We Start Roundtable. This is an international, global roundtable where people from all over the world are getting together and talking about actually what's going on on the planet at this moment in time. And basically just a general discussion and information and sharing of information and swapping ideas and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is the 12th of May 2018, just for the record. So if people tune into this podcast in a couple of years' time, they know exactly what date it was. So 12th of May 2018. Now, before we start... Um, if if everybody just wants to say a quick hello, and then what we'll do is, because our guest is Thomas from the Truth, Honor, Integrity Show, I'm going to go over to Thomas, and Thomas can give us a background of, for people who don't know Thomas, he can give us a background of um, what he does in the THI show, and then we can get into the discussion. So we'll just go around the table for everybody just to say hello, and a little bit of uh, information about yourself, starting with Detlev. Shoot away, Detlev. Yeah, Hi. Yes, Zetlev of Wake News Radio, Wake News TV here from Switzerland. I'm producing the show um, and uh, I have my German-speaking shows Tuesdays and, uh, and Thursdays. But I also do some uh, uh, English shows once in a while and I'm a long-time member here of uh, uh, United We Strike and now United We Start, our new way to get people together to discuss very important issues. And uh, I'm liking to pass forward to Matt. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Matt Navarro from the New World Order Report. My website is nwodor.com. Nwodor.com. Hop on over there, <clears throat> click on the podcast archives page, and you'll find a full library of shows I've done with some pretty spectacular guests from uh, James Fetzer, Dr. Cass Ingram, Dr. Gwen Scott, 
a lot of health information there to help you stay healthy. A lot of information uh, about the New World Order, who runs it, uh, the background of it, and uh, their agenda, which is to exterminate 80 to 90 percent of the world's population. It's a library uh, of knowledge. Uh, I suggest you take advantage of it and educate yourself and uh, do your own research. Don't just buy whatever I say or what my guests say. Do your own research and make sure that you understand uh, what's really going on. Then take that information and use it to help educate others so that we can turn this oppressive uh, system around. Because we're not going to do it by uh, as uh, one country uh like, like Germany doing something or America doing something, we're going to have to di- turn this around on a global scale. And that's why Alan, Detlef, and I were part of United We Strike and now United We Start. So I'm glad to be here and uh, uh, looking forward to a great show. Brilliant stuff. Cheers, uh, Matt. Uh, Michael? Yes, uh, I'm also a team of Wake News, um, a team of uh, Detlef's Wake News team. And I, I try to really look at things historically and from a spiritual aspect uh, of what uh, the hidden forces are doing. And I don't limit myself on the material uh, interpretations that all, only uh, those things matter, but I want to go uh, beyond that so I can see even beings and actors which are not incarnate and they're, uh, you know, put their goals out in the open and uh, look into the occult history of human development and uh, sort of, I uh, rely most of the par- most of the time to uh, <clears throat> to texts and readings and uh, spiritual signs of Rudolf Steiner. So um, that is my kind of uh, quest to uh, really expose in the, the cosmic history of humankind, their responsibility of uh, the, the cosmic development and their role, what they have to play. That is my uh, quest, so to speak. Brilliant stuff. Right, and just for myself, um, you have myself, Alan James from Open Your Mind Radio. Uh, we run a show every Sunday, 7 to 9 GMT. Myself and Steve, who's my co-host, and we talk about everything and anything, and we get guests on the show, and um, we cover a lot of subjects. You can find us on oamradio.com. Now, this show is being simulcasted on OAM Radio, as well as Wake News. So, if you go over to Wake News, it'll be there. If you go off to OAM Radio, it'll be there. And if you go over to United We Start to Org it'll also be there so you can hear us everywhere now also before we move, go off to Thomas I just want to say we do have a chat room on the United We Start to Org website you don't need to be registered to go in the chat room all you have to do is type in a name click on the login as guest option and then click on the submit button and you'll be able to log into the chat room. You don't need to be registered. So uh, come and join us. If you want to get in on the chat, come and join us in the chat room and we can have a have a chat and a catch up. And if there's any questions that you want to ask any of us or a guest, by all means, stick it in the chat room there and we can ask the question. Now, our guest on today is is a, a chap called Thomas Williams from the Truth, Honor, and Integrity show. Thomas is a, a good friend of OIMs. Thomas has been on our show uh, a number of times, always has great information. And uh, as you'll probably tell from his accent, although he lives in Florida, he uh, he's a scouser uh, and he comes from Liverpool, but he's been in Florida quite a while. So, uh, Thomas, I'll uh, pass it over to you if you want to give people a rundown on your background and then we'll uh, we'll get into the discussion. Yes, uh, thank you all of you for um, inviting me on. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this show. Yeah, I am a researcher um, from a very young age, due to various experiences when I was young. Uh, how I how I had knowledge that uh, wasn't learned, and uh, it went on from there. And around 2011, uh, the uh, having absorbed the alternative media um, between five and seven hours a day on various following various people I decided to step in with my own knowledge and uh, I ended up on a radio show uh, with Drake <laughs> for my sins and uh, and then developed into uh, truth on and integrity and um, currently we're working on many aspects of uh, fixing things, uh, um, aligned with the Manor World Holding Trust, who uh, was trying to uh, 
restore the uh, wealth of the planet back to the people. And uh, there's a lot of fun and games going on with that. And uh, it's busy times, you know. Uh, we have the radio show Truth on It and Integrity every Thursday evening at 7.30. And uh, that covers, uh, like uh, Alan's show, uh, a plethora of subjects. We have intel, we have op-ed pieces and uh, news and views around the world. And that's 7.30 Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. Excellent stuff. And obviously people want to know that when you come on OAM, Thomas, and you do your show as well, you have uh, very good intel. And obviously, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about this. I know it's something that you want to talk about as well, um, about the evidence and truth and everything else and what the difference is. Um, do you want yeah. to give us a, if, if just a, a quick bio or a quick heads up on why you, uh, where the intel is coming from and you know, uh, and why, and you know, the experience you've had with dealing with these people. Um, I have a number of sources. Um, one's fairly obvious, um, and then there's others that uh, are not as obvious, and it's kind of difficult. Um, whether you, uh, as a listener, accept that information. Now, what what is has been proven different to those who listen regularly to our show is a lot of the things that we said ahead of time uh, came to fruition. So uh, is that validation? Well, it depends on the individual at the end of the day. Um, you know, I put out a piece in the last, the last month, what is proof and what is truth? You know, we're, we're in um, a world that's been distorted beyond all reason, where everything you thought you knew uh, is a load of BS basically, and um, uh, and people have got to get over that that boundary that their life was a lie, uh, no matter which subject you talk about. Uh, there's elements of lies streaming right through it, and um, you know people ask for ET disclosure. Well, our shows covered the ET narrative quite a bit, uh, including some important information in the last show. Um, but is that disclosure to, to certain people? Well, to some it is, to others it's not. They uh, require more proof or more tr uh, what is truth. But what is truth and what is proof is subjective to the individual. And the, the, to me, is you can, let's just use the ET disclosure, uh, is people have already had disclosure but don't accept it. But they're waiting for someone else. There's always someone else along the line that's got to validate the information that's already out. Well, if you keep going along that line and keep raising the bar, you're never going to learn anything. Uh, and this is where we have uh, an interesting um, psychological aspect of the alternative media is they keep demanding proof because they won't face up to reality. Because reality is far scarier than they realised. And uh, it's a big problem. But if you asked all the panel, which person or which group of people would you accept a narrative from and that accept that as the truth? And, and that's the key because, because you know, all, of, all, all the, your guests today have all put out what they believe is largely the truth. What is it? Well, it's subjective. Uh, and we can all say, well, no, uh, that's not right because someone wrote this book and, and this is right and this is wrong. But do you really feel for the truth in your own heart? Because once you step into your own inner self, then you find out the real truth. But if you keep looking for external uh, ver uh, verification or or extra layers of proof, you're never going to find it. Mm. I will say, yeah, Thomas, that the one thing that I've noticed for all the interviews that I've done, and maybe Detlev, Michael, and Matt as well, is that you'll always get guests on who contradict each other, and they go, oh, no, 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 they're wrong, I'm right. And 
the amount of times that has happened with interviews. So I, we don't challenge it because sometimes we don't know what the truth is. So who are we to challenge something that we don't know what it is? But I'm going to pass over to uh, Matt. And uh, Matt, if you want to kick off and if you have any questions or start a discussion on what you want to talk about, please shoot away. Yeah, I, I challenge. I challenge all the time. I challenge things that people tell me. I'm not going to take at face value what they say is truth. I'm going to do my own research and be objective. So, yeah, I challenge uh, consistently. And uh, when I hear people say X, Y, Z, and I'll go, hmm, I'll go look that up myself. And if that doesn't seem right, then <clears throat> I take that as a negative on that person or source or whatever. I mean, you, you, you can take the example of um, cable news on TV in, in America. You look at CNN or, or MSNBC, and a lot of people will look at that and say, okay, this is the truth. It must be true because it's coming from the TV. And it's so twisted lies, and it's yeah. a, a, a warping of uh, reality that, uh, you know, I'm going to go somewhere else to see if that's what uh, what they're saying is, is true or not, or at least try to validate what they're saying. And if I can't validate that, then, you know, I'm, I'm going to make, make up my own mind and say, well, this is, this is not accurate. So, Thomas, you mentioned uh, ET disclosure. I have an interest in that field. Can you give us an uh, uh, overview of what you mean by this ET disclosure? And maybe you can name your sources or, or uh, how you came to this information. Um, ET disclosure is, um, like I said, we've already had ET disclosure. If we didn't have ET disclosure, None of us would know about it unless you had a personal experience. I've had personal experiences, so I don't need uh, Donald Trump or Mr. Putin or Theresa May or anybody else to tell me what I already know. I'm comfortable of what I saw and what I've dealt with in knowing that I, I know of ET disclosure. So I, I'm not waiting for ET disclosure. And that's the key aspect, you know, not everyone's had those experiences. So do you believe? Well, you've, you've had a bombardment on the, it's like a game of cat and mouse with the ET disclosure. They'll put so much out in the media and then they monitor the blogs and the forums to see whether there's a drastic increase in people following that that narrative if there's too drastic of, of an increase they pull it back and then you hear nothing for a, a number of months or a number of years and then they go again and it's all cat and mouse but we've already had et disclosure it's whether you when you say have, we've okay wait, wait when you say we've had et disclosure describe that because that means nothing at this point to me what was disclosed well the the reality that we're not alone that's already been disclosed in by various who? talk. How? Um, well, uh, by myself and by many others around the world. They've the the archaeological level, the government level, uh, you name it, uh, the military level. The people have come forward. Can so, I just add, add something there, Thomas? To that, yeah. remember, guys, we don't have to prove all the UFO sightings in the world. All we have to prove is one. Right? Just one to yep. say that we're not alone. We don't have to prove them all. We just have to prove one. And that's been proven time and time again. Sorry, see, when I hear something like ET disclosure, I think of Bob Lazar and what he did with his information in, like, what, 1992 on KLAS with um, that reporter. I can't remember his name right now. But they did a series of uh, interviews, and he was talking about his experience working out at Area 51 in a side uh, location called S4 where they where they worked on you know reversing engineering uh, recovered alien craft now I look at that and, and say okay that might be disclosure but when you say alien disclosure I mean that that's a pretty broad term and you're not specifying what you mean if if uh, I, I can take I can take an example like Bob Lazar and say yes he disclosed what he knew uh, about area 51 and alien interactions with with the planet or, or with our government Okay, that I can I can identify as being part of the alien dis, uh, ET disclosure. So w when you use broad terms like that, I'm personally, 
I like specific examples. Um, uh, regarding to me, well, um, I've seen a plethora of craft. I've been on a craft. I've met them at various times in my life. Can you describe those experiences? Like when you say you met them, uh, you, that's your personal disclosure. But I mean, yeah. that doesn't mean that it's being disclosed to the general public on a global scale. Like, you know, the, no, it's Bob, just, Lazar, it's... the Bob Lazar tape, though, does disclose that. And he talks about, you know, uh, how the anti-gravity or anti-matter uh, reactors magnify uh, the gravity so be, waves. So because Bob Lazar was on the TV and publicized uh, on the, the what is a, a programming box, that makes it more valid than uh, millions of people around the world who have had experiences either negative. direct. No, negative. So you're saying... A, uh, ET disclosure is an individual thing, right? Is that Technically, what you're it's a, it's individual, and but but obviously, so many people, millions of people around the world have already experienced it. You know, you go and speak to the tribal people, no matter which country uh, they're in, they'll they, you're not telling them about ET ET disclosure. They've been meeting them for aeons. It's, okay. in, it's in all their history, uh, no matter which country, you, like I say, which country you can go meet the uh, American natives, you can go meet the New Zealand natives, the African natives, they'll all tell you they interacted directly. Now, okay. it's when a, you a say lot. disclosure, it's, it's okay, it would tend to indicate a, a process or, a, or an event, okay, like President Trump hauling off hauling uh, an alien on stage and saying, hey, okay, these are the guys that we're working with, uh, and they really actually control the planet. You know, to me, that's when you say disclosure, that's what that means. But well, if I you, think, you, were you I, saying, I, if you're saying that if if we all uh, look into this and have our own experiences and that ex uh, reinforces our belief or an individual's belief in that ETs are real, then, then yeah, I can buy that. But when you say disclosure, it seems it would indicate to me uh, an event of some kind that would make the mass public aware. Matt, Matt I, think, I think we'd have to, you know, I just say, we, I think we have to define disclosure for the man in the street. Disclosure is President Trump or Putin going on TV and saying their ETs are here. That's for, for the man in the street, right? right? But for but that's just the way, you know, the people who are in the Matrix, that's the way they see it because they've been programmed that this is, Hollywood has told us that disclosure is the president coming up and going, ETs are on the planet, right? That's their definition of disclosure. But for people who are outside the Matrix like ourselves, we go and do the research and check it out. And we've spoken to people and interviewed people and maybe had their own personal experiences. And that should be their disclosure. So does it, I think there's, there's a difference depending on who the person is, what the definition, uh, the definition is of disclosure. But I'd like to get Detlev in here because Detlev, I'd like to get your take and Michael's take on this as well. Yeah, hi. Thanks a lot. Well, this is a, an interesting subject, obviously. I Just uh, a day ago, I um, uh, have seen a video um, by Secure Team 10. I don't know whether you're familiar with that uh, YouTube yeah. channel. It's pretty big. And um, this guy is not saying it is every, everything is true. He's saying, he's seeing, uh, but is, he's being sent to lots of uh, information. And uh, the video I meant shows uh, over German uh, air, uh, actually, <laughs> uh, taking place over the uh, German uh, territory, um, a uh, group of, uh, yeah, of plasma uh, vehicles, I don't know, or beings, which are multiplying themselves in a very curious way. And this was uh, continuing for quite some time. And this was uh, not only recorded by this uh, one chap from uh, Germany, but also by others. Um, we've seen those uh, appearances uh, numerous times uh, all over the world. I think in the US, uh, there's also sightings uh, like that uh, happening. Um, so this is not uh, a, a, a strange happening. It is uh, rather common to see uh, things like that. 
This does not necessarily prove whether this is uh, uh, intelligence working at work, but it shows there's something uh, which we cannot explain. And therefore, Thomas, I'm, I'm, I'm always very, uh, very interested in, um, in findings and experiences by uh, others who, are, uh, who had an individual ex uh, experience. I never, uh, I never had it uh, as such. I only had sightings myself. Uh, but uh, Thomas, uh, that's that is a, a subject which is definitely interesting because we are also expecting something uh, in the future and maybe in the near future by uh, the powers to be that they want to um, yeah make a show for us for the common people uh, that ETs may uh, may be uh, you know invading or taking over or dictating or whatever um, uh, our lives. So that is an interesting subject. What what are your findings there? Did you have any any direct experiences or informations which were presented to you, uh, which would uh, help us in analyzing this? Yeah, there's been a number of beings that were here before us, or terraformed this planet way before we arrived. Um, a majority of them do not come in from outside. They were already here. Some of them were trapped here uh, as part of the Draco Mantid system. And the, there's a, a range of beings um, all of, dotted all over the world that um, have um, the, the video you described sounds to me like cloaking. And this is what, what people think uh, is technology for, of the future. It's not. All technology is the past. And when people understand that, then it opens their mind. We use uh, Alan's show. It opens huh. their mind more into the possibility. But if you're thinking, always thinking that technology is the future, then you're limiting your own thought process. So that these have cloaking technology. They have uh, weaponry way beyond what we can do. Uh, I've seen, and this is why the militaries around the world have done their best to interact with them because they're getting uh, doing exchanges that haven't been beneficial to humanity. There's a lot of off-world trade. Um, the figure I was given is 70% of all world trade on this planet goes to off-world. So when people say, uh, how, how are we all in debt? There's your answer. Now, uh, there's a, n a number of beings now um, who the raptor in particular um, is a big change. The three, there's three versions of greys who are now deciding that they've had enough uh, because they've been uh, abused as well. There's uh, a, a couple of others. Um, one particular race is here because they they have their worlds destroyed by the same uh, entities. And they're here to collect seeds to go back to their own world, and they got trapped. And so uh, there's a, a range of different types of beings. And, you know, uh, I would love for uh, one day to um, for them to be introduced. But they uh, are overall kind of... Uh, don't look on humanity in a good light. Now, what we've been doing recently is um, building up trust on both sides because we have uh, a con common enemy. But these clowns that have been running this planet um, have destroyed it before and they're on a path to destroying it again and also humanity. As I think it was Matt that said before about them wiping out 80 90%. That's so a certain race can then take over this planet again. And uh, obviously there's people uh, and beings who decided, uh, no, we're not doing that. And we're largely now uh, gaining trust and working together. And the biggest problem we have at the moment is the group called SSP, which is SS small p because it's the Nazi breakaway faction that were linked with the Aldebaran group and the Thule group back in the 30s and 40s. So I hope that gives you uh, an idea. That was a mouthful. 
I want to know your source on that. How can I validate what you're saying? I mean, you're making some fantastic claims about history and current interactions. And I'm like, well, sh- show me someplace on the web that I can validate this. Because all, all it is I'm hearing from you is just a story, a fairy tale at this point. Um, well, if you're looking for information on the Internet, um, it's needle in a haystack. That's the reality. Well, point me to something. Point me, because, because, I mean, y- y- I can make claims, too, about my interactions with Bigfoot and the unicorns. And if I can't prove it, then it's just my fantasy. Well, I'm not here to, to validate uh, or change you your should opinion. You should be. You're, you're, saying, you're, you're, you're making a whole lot of claims about Earth history and Earth uh, interactions with aliens. Uh, 70% of our... Uh, GDP goes to off-world, show me that, where you're getting that information. Can I just uh, say something there? If if somebody came to me, you know, if somebody was working for a big corporate company, say a pharma- pharmaceutical company, and they came to me and they gave me some intel or informa- inside information, because you get inside a trading, we hear that. So if they came to me and gave me inside information and told me what was going on, and then I start telling people, you know, one or two friends of what I've been told. How could I validate that information? Because the person wouldn't want to be known. It's supposed to be kept quiet. And that's kind of, as a whistleblower or somebody giving you the information, they want to kind of keep it on the QT. And it wouldn't be on the internet, but it's something that you've been told. So it's not it's not something oh. that's subjective, but how could oh. you help validate that? You, you look at Cody Snodgrass that we had. He wrote a book. He named names. He placed dates and, and times on things. <clears throat> and he showed you evidence. Uh, yeah, but, at but, this but, point, but, but Thomas but my, is making but my, my all these the claims. Thing. Thomas is making all these claims. Show me something that is tangible that would qualify as evidence. Okay, well, here's, the, here's, the, here's my argument on that, right? And I know where you're coming from, right? But if this person, say, in a pharmaceutical company came to me and told me inside information and then V said don't tell anybody because I lose my job or else I'll get beaten up or jumped on or killed then you know you, you what way you can't name names because you're going to put your man's life in danger or he loses his job so so there's some information that you can't bring sure. out and you know let people so you can't turn around and say look I can't give you the information because this guy's going to either lose his job or get killed but this is what I've been told. And sometimes the only thing that you can do is say, right, okay, we'll put it on the shelf and I'll do some of my own research to see if there's anything similar to that. But with the, the amount of VT stuff that's out there at the moment, there's so much information out there and so many people have had personal experience and sightings and everything else. I think we can all accept from, from our point of view, being outside the matrix that, yeah, do you know, we're not alone. It's the people still inside the matrix want the president or Trump to come on TV and say it because that's what they've been programmed to believe is what disclosure is. But we know there's governments around the world, 33 governments, I think, that have released all certain files and inf- information. Um, recently, we had the, from the uh, FBI or something, or does the American government release loads of information? Yeah. So, yeah. the, the, you know, it's but basically they're not going to come out and say it because a lot of people are probably going to say, well, what are you going to do about it? So it's going to drip fed. And what I've understood to believe from all the studying I've been doing is that the day the earth stood still, the movie was the first movie funded by the American military because they knew they wanted the Ameri- they wanted to tell the people, but they knew that you'd have Grandar coming out with a shotgun shooting at them darn ETs. So they said, right, we're going to use Hollywood as a medium. And when the consciousness level of the planet reaches 85%, then when, when people, when, when we come out and tell people, they go, oh, yeah, sure, we knew about that. And that's the that's the level now. A lot of people are beginning to say, well, of course we can't be. It's impossible that we're going to be on our own. And more and more, Hollywood and all the other stuff is coming out, and we're just being gently being told bit by bit. So when they do make it, maybe they will make a big disclosure that people go, "Ah, sure, we yeah, we we knew about that," you know, because it would have devastating effect on society financially and religiously if yeah. they time it wrong. So, you know, I mean, so I don't think disclosure will ever come. But maybe not. Maybe I can, not. I could point you though. Uh, I could point you to examples uh, like. 
uh, examples like Billy Meyer, the one arm uh, um, farmer from Switzerland. You know, he provided uh, video proof, uh, photographic evidence and, and photographs of these people and f- the things that he shouldn't have been able to accomplish. That one story there, I can point to and say, yeah, that looks pretty credible as far as uh, having a human interaction with alien craft and beings. OK, but when you make grand statements like 70 percent of our GDP goes to off world, fu- I want to I want to verify that. And if you can't, then it's a fairy tale. Well, fair, it's it's fair, not, I've, fair enough. I've, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, sorry, Thomas. Uh, it, it's what you believe in, and if you don't believe, I'm I'm good with that. Like I said, you have to do right. go go and do more research. I'm a uh, little pragmatic a, like that. And, okay, uh, can we? Well, I'd like to get Michael in, um, because uh, Michael's out the cold there. Thomas, if you want to finish up and just bring Michael in there. No, I'm um, good. Okay, well, uh, listening to all this, uh, before I have some questions, because um, my question would be, you know, because, you know, when we look in the, the you see, we, you might have known, you might know that film, that movie that was on in the, in the 1970s, The Planet of the Apes. So everybody uh, in their religion, they created God to their image. They created an ape God. And when I look in the, into our human consciousness, we like to make everything like us. Mm. Yeah. So we like to have, uh, you know, if we were teddy bears, we would put uh, the Jesus Christ, uh, you know, we would portray him as a teddy bear. So um, I'm a little bit a skeptic, although uh, I think everything is possible. This co- this universe is very big. We have a multitude of spiritual beings which are not incarnate. Yeah. Which, ha- which which are of inc- of different kind of shape and form. If you can talk about these issues, you know, in the spiritual terms, you cannot talk about form because there is no form. But um, you could say colors or whatever. And um, and I would say that uh, uh, we always, um, you know, we, we tend to have it in our own image. But what my question is, um, what kind of uh, superstructures do those incarnate aliens physically incarnate aliens have what is their quest in life what is their spiritual superstructures do they believe in god what is the the occult knowledge of these beings um and then we have to question our own consciousness because our own consciousness we never question we never questions our thoughts are we our thoughts or our thoughts beings which have an independent life, which we never look at it because we identify with our thoughts. And that identification of our own thoughts, there already I see a big uh, 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 danger. So it can yeah. be biased. So if yeah. these thoughts would have a life on its on their own, they could bias us. And uh, who are we, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, are we, we could say we are our consciousness. But our consciousness is is uh, constantly being um, uh, manipulated by the thoughts which we think we create, which might yeah. be wrong. So um, these are the, the the thoughts. So everything is possible. I would say there might be. You know, God is great. He can create a lot of incarnate different beings and different species. But yet. There is a bigger multitude of beings which are not incarnate, which surround us every day and manipulate yeah. maybe us every day, and we're not we're totally unaware of it. Mm. Yeah, the, um, what I would describe as the smoke beings, they look very smoky, they're black. Uh, occasionally you can see red eyes, um, known as the djinn. Um, they're, they're operated um, largely for the dark purposes. Uh, but they can also uh, show you the light. You know, uh, the idea that we have to wipe out all the dark, uh, well, there's no reflection in, is there? How do you know whether you are uh, all light consciousness or or not? And the key is balance. And that's what has been, uh, from my knowledge, has been the problem, uh, not only on this planet, but uh, thousands of planets and also right across the universe is a lack of balance and uh, it was tipped to the dark 
and there could be various reasons for that. And one of the main um, theories on it, it was a fractal virus that uh, perpetrated right throughout this universe. So <coughs> uh, those um, non-physical forms are far more prevalent than the physical because as you uh, rise in consciousness uh, and this planet should have gone up, gone a long time ago only for certain entities wanting to control it because it is a nexus planet and uh, it's you know we have a chance at this time to raise the consciousness of everyone and move on you know uh, we are a soul we're not this physical form it's just a vessel that the soul carries and uh, so those who have done their inner work and uh, the shadow side which we covered a lot in the show because it is important whether ETs exist or not uh, what is important is the elevation of our species uh, which is humans and uh, our raising consciousness and to take this planet forward the way it should have been and not the way it currently uh, ex exhibits itself largely in my opinion due to interference but also um, largely to do with our own uh, spiritual laziness and we uh, and a lack of endeavor to internalize and always externalize like people always want an external proof or people always want external validation those proof and validation are not external that internal yeah yeah that's that's interesting because um i i thought you know we don't even realize what what we are we don't have self-knowledge you know like in the greek uh, sayings they said ton no say enough ton that is known th know thyself but we don't yeah. know ourselves we don't know we don't even know what happens in our dream life why don't we have continuous consciousness well we one have, of, the, we have the deep just, sleep you have the deep sleep, you have the dream life, and you have the daylight, the day consciousness. And we don't even question these groups, these these three uh, uh, these three categories, you know. And why I is it there? Why we do have to sleep? What is sleep? What is uh, death? Mm. Uh, and, you know, these are questions which uh, you know which which go into the same the same area basically. I yeah, think you're right, right there, Michael. I just uh, just to comment on Michael's what he said there, Michael. That's very important what you said, and and you're right. When we do our when we did our talk, and we've another talk in November. One thing we always say is we feel anyway just three phases that we you go through. Um, now this is obviously open to change because when you have a what we call a fluid belief system, it means you change. But we are we what we talk about in our our, our talk to an audience is you have the matrix then you have the uh, you, to be a become aware and then you become self-aware so there for for me for me and steve when we do when we talk about this the matrix is obviously being inside the matrix and just being you know in the program then becoming aware is becoming stepping outside the matrix and becoming aware of the system and what's going on and then you become self-aware and then you realize who you are as a spiritual being and everything else now the, the problem is that some people skip some people become aware and they're not they don't understand the whole self-aware thing so they be, be they kind of um restrict themselves in uh, learning because they're still stuck in in a belief system even though they've stepped outside the matrix and then when some people actually jump the belief becoming aware and they jump into being self-aware they're the spiritual people who become spiritually aware but they don't know anything about what's really going on in the bigger picture um, and i've met a, a mixture of these people and what we try and do with our talk is to say to people, well, if you look at these three stages, they're the three stages we kind of, we have to deal with um, to, and then that will give us a really good um, picture of what's going on. And then it's just a learning process, keep an open mind and obviously, you know, learn, 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 and don't be stuck in the belief system. And that's the, that's why we, we talk about what we talk about when we call it a fluid belief system. But um, yeah, Detlev, do you want to come in there? Well, I think uh, what is very uh, worrying for uh, for us is uh, that there's a move uh, on towards uh, IT, uh, which is um, 
the intelligence which is uh, supposed to take over. I mean, just uh, look at the uh, Google uh, presentation uh, just recently, where they introduced a, um, a tone tone operator, which is basically simulating your voice, and your voice, although it's not you, is going to call someplace, uh, order a pizza or whatever, or uh, go to the hairdressers, and yeah. it sounds exactly like uh, like your voice, um, and it's also replying. So this yeah. is a very worrying technology, and uh, why is this being done? Even if you think, uh, like the Rothschilds, as one of the most important and uh, well-known uh, bankster families who are, you know, one of the richest in the world, um, they can, uh, you know, do whatever they like. So why would they? Not quite. Why would they move towards uh, uh, technology this way, uh, which is not giving them, uh, as if they are human, uh, we don't know. Okay, uh, but if they were. What uh, what what kind of uh, advantage does it give to them? I, you know, you have to think about uh, what is the development uh, and why is the development taking place. Uh, the pace uh, we can we can uh, look at it. Well, Thomas, you can come in and talk about yeah. that, can't you? Yeah, the Rothschilds um, are not as wealthy as they once were. A lot of their accounts have been um, uh, returned to the trust, which is what they've been stealing out of. Uh, for hundreds of years. The Rothschilds family themselves are the closest in DNA to the uh, race known as the Draco. Now, the um, as for the other bloodline families, uh, it's expected that they're also, their DNA is not from here as well. And there's arguments in some quarters that a lot of uh, uh, general people, not royalty and not families, and also um, have a DNA that doesn't uh, originate here. So th there's th that aspect. Now, the overall aspect is um, these people uh, that have been operated, um, the, the technology, uh, the Google technology, I knew about that 10 years ago. They had um, a little... Um, a little piece that you could put under your tongue and uh, I can speak and it will sound like Alan or I can speak and it sounds like Hillary Clinton. So that again, like I said earlier, this technology is not new. They've had this a long, long time. They've had the blueprints of the previous civilizations that r rose to technological level and every time humans reach technological level, there's a disaster, whether it's a flood or or advanced weaponry comes in. And I think uh, some of the uh, tribal people believe that uh, it was humans messing up. Well, I, uh, there's elements to that, but I think overall, uh, going on about what, what uh, Michael said, there's um, a hidden non-physical interference that drives certain groups who are in control at the time of technological level. They all build up and it takes about 10, 13,000 years, which is quicker than any other species. And then suddenly uh, we're talking World War Three and catastrophic events, except this time it's not taking place. So they're trying to, uh, you know, people say, oh, uh, this hasn't happened and this happened hasn't happened. Well, I'll tell you what hasn't happened. The fact that we're having this radio show means we've had a massive victory because we should have gone before 2012. The fact that this World War Three has been attempted since 1990 and it's failed is another victory for the people. And the fact that they haven't managed to release the Zika virus, the zombie virus, as it's more commonly known, is again another victory for we the people. The fact that they haven't uh, advanced to a point where they're still struggling to put out the transhumanist event, uh, agenda, which is the way they want to go. They don't. They want 
immortality. So they, the way you can achieve that by cheating, going back to source, which is where you get corrected yourself, your own judgment, nobody else's, um, is they, they'll uh, create biobots. And that's this technological uh, advancement where they're uh, giving people gadgets to, to distract them, but also those gadgets are, are also all trackers. Uh, and they want a transhumanist agenda, and, and with the transhumanist agenda, they don't need all what they call us as useless eaters. So they they have failed. All all the big big programs have all failed. The uh, the genocide and uh, the World War Three and the, it's all failed. Their contract with the uh, one-off particular off-world race ran out in 2012. They tried to uh, meddle with time to push it back to attain that victory. But they're not going to succeed. This time, the people will rise and eventually we will have, uh, we won't have one event. I know the the alt media does all think about this light switch event, whatever that may be, ET disclosure, financial disclosure. Uh, in my opinion, the events are going on now. They're already happening. And, and if you keep uh, waiting for a light switch event, you'll have missed most of it. Because mm-hmm. the, the, these are the most exciting times in history. It doesn't feel that way because it's still unpleasant. And we're hearing lots of things that are, are uncomfortable on a conscious and physical level to yeah, the person. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, and so this is why there's uh, some people uh, get stuck and blocked and they, and they don't want to hear inf- information. You know, there's uh, the, the pedophilia thing, you know, that that type of th- uh, uh, item um, tends to tip a lot of people's stomachs and they won't look at it. And they know that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, pedophilia and being in the church and politicians and uh, the music people and the actors and actresses that was classed as a conspiracy three years ago it's not no more yeah that's true and yeah. again that's a sign of th- that to me is an event for we the people because now all the, the what they labeled us uh, as conspiracies whether it's 9-11, whether it's the pedophilia in the church or the financial corruption, has all been exposed in the mainstream media. That is disclosure. That's been disclosed. But you have a raft of people who are blocked, for whatever reason, into absorbing and accepting that information. Yeah, now, There's something I can agree with you on, Thomas, is that they are behind on their uh, agenda, the New World Order agenda. And yeah. it's because of the internet, I believe, uh, that has made the consciousness of humanity yeah. in, in, increase uh, to the point where, you know, we're starting to see this and it's spreading. And, and it's through programs like ours at United We Strike and here at United We Start that we help usher in that awareness. I want to get back to a point that Michael was making about us being spiritual beings. Um, I, think, I think it would be helpful if people... Uh, grab at least one of Ray Moody's books. I would recommend uh, Raymond Moody, Life After Life. Uh, and it's a study. He's a medical doctor. He, he did a study of people who have died and then clinically were dead and then have been resuscitated. And they talk about their experiences when they're dead. And there's a lot of commonality there. And uh, it might help open someone's eyes to the nature of the spiritual being that we are. Like Thomas was saying, we're just vessels for that soul. And I think Ray Moody's books, Life After Life, uh, would be a great start to, to help somebody um, start to imagine uh, a bigger world if you're not already there. So, and I wanted to mention that. As far as the Google technology, I was in Disneyland last week and I got to meet Darth Vader, and he's definitely not from this planet. But um, no. you met Mr. Cheney then. <laughs> right. can i just add, add to uh add to what matt is saying there we actually had a lady on our show a doctor who actually interviewed vietnam vets 
um, over a thousand who all experienced near-death experiences and came back and talked yeah. about their experiences. So um, she was an interesting lady. Now, I can't think of her name offhand, but it was a very interesting interview just to confirm the whole NDE thing. And that does more to us than this meat soup. And obviously, with all the QHHT practitioners like Alba Wyman um, and Alice, Alice and Co., out there doing regressional and people talking about to the higher self and everything else. Um, I think that um, I think people have to understand we are more what we are energy. We vibrate on the frequency where atoms vibrating. And when you people start understanding that, you know, even the table in front of us and the microphones we're talking on, it's all energy. They're all on a certain frequency. And this is why Royal Raymond Rife could heal cancer and whooping cough because he knew about frequencies. He knew disease was on a frequency. And this is yeah. why we have the spooky machine. And the speaking machine is based on Rife as well, using a process called quantum entanglement, which Einstein came and, and found out about when he called it spooky. And um, so all these technologies are beginning to come out. And I totally agree with, you know, Matt and, and Thomas that the old media, although there's only really a, a few of us doing what we're doing, that because of the alt media and the Internet as well, it's it's blown a hole. Um, on their their game plan and the fact as thomas said we are here um and we're alive and they didn't get what they wanted in 2003 and various other dates means that their plans have worked but before uh, i pass over i just want to remind people that who have tuned in late you're listening to the united we start round table uh, it's a monthly round table and you have myself, Alan James, from Open, Open Your Mind Radio. You have Detlev and Michael from Wake News Radio. You have Matt from the New World Order Report. And our special guest is Thomas Williams from the Truth, Honor and Integrity Show. And we're here just uh, chatting away. The chat room is available. If you go over to unitedwestart.org, you don't have to be registered. You can just go over there, type in the name, click on the login as guest, and then click the submit button. And then you'll be able to get into the chat and join us in the chat. Right. Uh, so I'll pass over to whoever wants to take it and um, and carry on. Can I, can I well, chime I in on it? Oh, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead, Thomas. No, you're yeah, okay. Well, uh, I wanted to refer to, uh, yeah, I, I to, to what uh, Thomas said before about a AI. I think uh, it is a satanic or arimatic mockery of human life. Yeah. And uh, they want to attain, et attain eternal life, which won't be possible because they don't have the uh, supernatural superstructure that means buddhi atma and manas that is uh, that is the, the spiritual components of our human existence they don't have the ether body they don't have the astral body and they don't have the eye so it's a, it's a blunt illusion of these uh, materialists that think that they can uh, take their uh, limited uh, banal consciousness into eternity, that is that yeah. is uh, blasphemous, even. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, well, and uh, you know we are here to develop ourselves to heighten our consciousness that we are, uh, so to speak, cosmic co-workers with God eventually to run this universe. That's our purpose. And yeah. um, for that, in the old mystery schools, these people, these these chelas, these these students. They had to study that and, uh, you know, do meditations, all sorts of different medita meditations. And, um, you know, that's what the materialists want to stop and Ariman wants to stop. He, they want to cut us, uh, Ariman wants, or Satan wants to cut us off of this uh, spiritual superstructure and the communication with the higher God, so to speak. Absolutely. Um, uh, I can remember you. Uh, um, no, sorry. Uh, back again. Uh, we will have a break here uh, on top of the hour, so we've got another one and a half minutes. Um, please go ahead, Matt. Oh, no. Um, think Tom, I, Thomas, do you want to come in there quickly? Yeah, yeah? Thomas, you can, yeah, you can finish uh, this up. Yeah, death is a control system. It's a lie. It's uh, perpetrated by the same people that run the Catholic Church. The AI, um, the psychotic AI, which was run by two particular races and operated by a third, has gone down. And there is a new quantum system that's allowing humans to develop without interference as much as possible. Um, there is no higher God. 
you are the gods, all of you. We we are all a, um, a piece of what is what people will call, some people will call God. I will call it source. We were all source energy. So there's no one higher than anybody else, whether this Darth. planet or any any anywhere else. Um, and energy itself, you, uh, I think it's Matt, uh, no, not Matt, um, Michael mentioned about energy. En- energy never goes anywhere. It just transmutes. Mm. And everything is a frequency. We are a frequency. Illness is a frequency and a vibration. Once you are able to tap in to those frequencies and vibrations, you do not need technology to go forward. Technology is a poor version of the self because the self has far more technological capabilities than we realize because we've been limited and everything's external and everything is internal. Okay. Darth Vader would call it the force, but you know. <laughs> Darth Vader's going down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're going to a break. And we'll be right back after that uh, and continue our uh, wonderful, fruitful discussion. See you. United we start. Fighting for freedom. A group discussion of activists, bloggers, authors and other leaders in the independent media to inform and educate listeners on various topics. Join us the second Saturday of a month, uh, 10 to 12 a.m. Pacific time, 18 to 20 hours GMT.
join United We Start, a group discussion of activists, bloggers, authors, and other leaders in the independent media to inform and educate listeners in various topics. Join us every second Saturday of the month at 10 to 12 a.m. Pacific Time, uh, which is 18 to 20 hours GMT. Join us. We're looking forward to meeting you. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are back here in our second hour of our United We Start uh, roundtable discussion, very lively discussion, uh, ranking from daily business to IT, ET, AI, <laughs> what <laughs> have you. So uh, we are back, and we would like to get into the discussion again. So uh, who is going to start? Well, Matt, do you want to kick us off regarding the Middle East and your take on things, and then we'll, yeah, we'll sure. throw, throw it around? Sure. So um, I've seen in the American media this constant drumbeat of war, how we must hate the Russians and how we must hate Syria and how we must hate the people of Afghanistan. Peace, I think, is gone from the uh, domain of the mainstream media or corporate-controlled media in America. And so when this week, President Trump, who I think has now been entirely compromised, um, you know, with his having to accept John Bolton as a senior uh, security advisor, uh, withdrawing from this um, nuclear deal that was made with Iran based on nothing then based on nothing, really, um, is, is very telling that the New World Order is desperate to start a war in that region. Um, you know, with as soon as he pulled out of that deal, Israel uh, hit targets in, in Syria that were supposedly Iranian-based uh, troops. And they're really, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say fearful, but I am concerned that this, this new move by America uh, and Israel and its allies is going to start a war like they want because they're going to poke uh, somebody in the eye like the Russians at some point or we're going to have some false flag event justifying uh, war with Iran and Syria and that's going to pull in the Russians and there goes World War III. I think we're already in World War III, but that'll be the kickoff like say 9-1-1 was for you know, the 9-11 wars. So I wanted to see what your all's opinion about that is, because this is part of that new old older agenda to exterminate 80 to 90 percent of us. And getting World War Three kicked off would be a nice trigger. OK, uh, Thomas, as you're the guest, do you want to come in on that? Russia is not the problem. It never was um, the problem uh, uh, that the powers that um, be uh, and soon not to be um, is Russia is self-sufficient it's also largely secular which then can't create divide and conquer but Russia um, the history of Russia has never really been revealed and when it does it changes everything that's where your ancient Lemuria was they were higher conscious humans and it and the migration from Russia went to the Middle East and India like the uh, the Mabarata, the Vedic text, the Aryan text, they all came from Russia and the satellite countries. So that's the issue with Russia. The Middle East, the Iran deal, is nothing to do with nuclear, um, uh, the nuclear weapons or nuclear plants, and everything to do with creating slush funds by the American government, Obama. Um, running on behalf of the Clinton and Bush cartel. Obama sent $1.6 billion in cash. You know, who sends uh, cash of that level and which government has ever traded in cash? They don't. It's all wire. And so that tells you uh, right there off the bat that something very strange is going on there. And it, it links into Benghazi. They were running... Um, slush funds for ISIS, Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda, um, is ISIL, you name it. All the names they've come up with are all created out of uh, Langley. And uh, 
basically uh, they are being shut down. The ISIS and the Al Qaeda's and the Taliban's, but all created by Langley, and they're being systematically attacked and shut down. There is elements of Trump being compromised because he's dealing with five factions. The, uh, the Illuminati, as it once was, is now split into five factions because the con higher control system collapsed in on itself. And again, that's a victory for we the people. And again, a victory for the alternative media for exposing it. And uh, there's a lot going on in the Middle East. There's a lot going on. You know, we, we put out on our show that uh, North and South Korea would reunificate over 12 months ago. Well, that's now what's taken place. And again, that was nothing to do with nuclear weapons or Kim Jong firing nuclear weapons because they're not allowed to. But the public doesn't know that. And, and it puts people in fear. And that's one of the worst things anyone can ever be is fear because that's when we react in the wrong way. And it was everything to do with shutting down the cabal, which operates South Korea, which also operates in Japan and Singapore and Thailand. And um, there's ongoing discussions behind the scenes where I knew Kim Young, was, uh, and I said it on our show, that Kim Young and Trump were going to make a, a proper peace deal. But you're not. What you're seeing in the public is a different version for what's going on behind the scenes. And a lot of this information is behind the scenes. And that's where some people have doubts because they're not privy to that type of information. And I do get that. Uh, but eventually over time our show has been validated uh, many many times particularly on the political and the financial stuff and certain other things but trump and his team uh, trump uh, i don't think anyone uh, you know maybe americans everyone would love to be the president but you, you don't want to be president now because you've got five factions all telling you you better do this otherwise we're going to take you out or we're going to blackmail you. And Trump's being blackmailed because he <laughs> he came from the financial world and there's a lot of skullduggery and he was bailed out by the Rothschilds a number of times. Um, my concern with Trump is that he's linked very much with the Israel Zionist element. But maybe those people have been told, you're going this way, carry on in public. Again, time will tell. But it, it could be the case, I'm asking people to look at it, that the former likes of Netanyahu and uh, Merkel and Macron, who uh, New World Order, have been told to operate in a certain way in public, but in private, help. And Putin is another one. And uh, as for uh, uh, Iran, you know, that's linked with the Muslim Brotherhood and the slush funds to keep the rogue military uh, elements going. And Obama eventually will get arrested. There's no question that the evidence is stacking up. And as uh, time goes on, people will start to see what we've been saying. You know, they said, oh, they bombed Syria. Well, there's actually no evidence. There was weapons fired, but they had no warheads. And that... Uh, again, is not something the public is privy to. Um, uh, but then that particular um, facility was run by Ted Turner who on CNN, who's paid for by the Rothschilds, Warren Buffett, another one of the financial goons, and what was the other one? The California governor, who's a Nazi himself, Jerry Brown. They are all cabal. So maybe that uh, i'm not asking people to believe it i'm asking people to look at it in a different light and now some of the appointments of trump um have disappointed me but maybe again i'm asking people to look, look at it themselves what happens if uh person a is a known rogue and their evidence has been shown to them and that we do have files on all people of what they've done and what they've been up to, called the, uh, it's commonly known uh, as the Fulcrum Files, which was covered on a, a show um, with James Spader. 
if you look at that, you'll see a lot of what's playing out now because it was like an advanced story of what's playing out, the fighting between the CIA and the FBI and, and the senators. And it, if certain people go to individuals and say, here's your file, we can either take you out now or you can come and help. Many are take, uh, taking a road to helping. And so what happens is, uh, say they put person A in a top position in the government, the media, who don't, who don't like Trump as they're working for the Clinton, Bush, Rothschild cartel, then um, highlight those individuals. They then bring up the dirt on them, which then gets exposed. Meanwhile, they're exposing others in the in that field but the exposure gets too much for that individual and then trump fires them you see that as a strategy because it's played out uh, a number of pointies have come in the media have highlighted them and then they get exposed in the public and then trump has no option but to fire them when that was the uh that was the plan right from the off one state. That's a lot for us to to, to swallow. Um, from what yeah, you said, well, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm asking you to uh, open your mind and look at it. I'm not asking, well, asking you to uh, look. accept it. Well, but you, you, know, you look at all of your appointments and look how many have been fired. Well, okay, let, let no, me you, just you, let me just you, jump in here for a minute, Matt. Sure. You know, let's let's forget about the content for a minute. We talk about this on OIM, right? Now, we always use the quote of Aristotle, the mark of an educated mind is to entertain the thought without accepting it, right? You don't have to believe what Thomas is saying, but at least entertain the idea that that possibly could be what's going on. So, you know, because a lot of people do think in, in black and white, it's true, it's not true. They never say, well, listen, I'm going to entertain this and I'll, I'll put it on the shelf and I'll do a bit of research and look into it and see what I can find out. And this is the problem with a lot of people. They see things that are black and white and a lot of things are not black and white and that's why aristotle that's why we love that quote and we base our fluid belief system on that quote we have to be able to entertain a thought if you're shutting down where we even entertaining something then that means the programming has worked so you have to say well okay look i'm not going to take that as solid truth but i'm not going to turn around and say that it's wrong either Let's entertain it. Let's do the research and let's check it out. And that applies to everything, not just what right. Thomas just said. It applies Absolutely. to everything exactly. because we have to be yeah. open-minded. We have to we have to be critical. We have to be skeptical, obviously, but we have to do the research and look into it. I, you know, we I could go back a few weeks, or maybe before Trump got in. I knew enough, you know, and I, you know, I could easily say, you know, well, I'm not really sure about that, Thomas, but I can see because I approach things from a spiritual psychological side and because my background is corporate um, and I've worked in the corporate and being a senior manager, Trump is a businessman. He's not a politician. So he now, as Thomas said as well, and I totally agree with him, it doesn't matter who the person is. They're all puppets. It's what they do in the position they have. Are they helping the people or are they making it worse for the people? Now, Trump, maybe he is playing a long game somewhere with the whole Israeli thing and the Zionists. But definitely, if Trump came in and said, right, all you guys, you're the 50 people here, you're all sacked. There would be an uproar. He'd probably be impeached and he'd probably like hang him up. He has exactly. to do it bit by bit. He has to play the long game and he has to do the cat and mouse stuff. And in, in a corporate world, I can relate to that and I can see the game he's playing as a businessman if that's what he's doing. You know, and now unfortunately, I mean, I've been in, in I've been around the board table in uh, as a corporate um, IT manager and acting CIO, right? Very few people that I meet have never ever been at that level in the boardroom. So I I know what goes on in there. And people think it's all lovey-dovey and their company loves us. Honest to God, the, the directors are sitting around and going, how can we screw the system? How can I get more money for myself? And that employee there, they, they're not playing ball. They're not doing what they're told. They're rocking the boat. How do we get rid of that person? This is what goes on in the boardroom. But people yeah. don't get to that level. So yeah. you're going to need some eyes. But I've been there and I've seen it. And I'm seeing the game that Trump is playing. As I say, he's not perfect. But maybe he's, no. playing, the, he's playing the long run. Yeah. 
uh, you know, I, I've been critical um, of Trump uh, on the show. In fact, uh, the reality was, uh, from what I knew from uh, my sources, is that Trump wasn't there to win. Hillary was. He was there to help her to win because he uh, he uh, he is the black and white. People either love him or they hate him. There's no in, no in between. And, and so that's how they use political uh, people where they divide and conquer. So then they get in what they wanted. But uh, four days before the election, uh, the my well, I was on another show at the time, Cosmic Voice. Uh, I said to Drake, uh, "Your guy Trump's going to win because they uh, the machines that were allowing Hillary to win." were removed by certain military. And this got confirmed by one of the members on the ground in Philadelphia. So uh, there was uh, validation uh, in that aspect. Um, but Trump was there to help Hillary to win, except Hillary had signed away all America's in-ground resources for the end of time to over to the uh, UN and uh, the part of climate change. Now, this part of climate change deal is nothing to do with climate change and everything to do with the UN and the IMF and the cabal controlling every country's in-ground resources. And that's why Trump pulled out of it. And that's why Trump pulled out of the Trans-Pacific and, and the Atlantic. And, uh, and that's why we shut down the UN because they're not interested in world peace, they're not interested in uh, uh, children and poverty. In fact, they're actively involved in, in some of the criminality of the child trafficking to do uh, in the UN, as been proven in Haiti. So the UN itself is now officially shut down. Is it still operating? Yes, because these clowns just think they can carry on, but they've got no sovereignty, so you're not going to see any treaties or agreements because unless you're a sovereign and they're not sovereign anymore because their contract ran out they can't do any more treaties that's why they changed the Paris climate treaty to agreement because only sovereigns can do treaties and the UN are not sovereign anymore and so I hope that helps uh, some people uh, okay, let's go over to uh, Detlev and Michael um, regarding the Middle East. And then the other subject I'd like us to talk about is Guantanamo Bay, um, because everybody's talking about people being shipped over there, but we don't have any evidence that I know of of it happening. But let's get to that in a minute. So, Detlev, do you want to talk about the Middle East and what your take is on it? Yeah, thanks, uh, Ellen. Yeah, and thanks, um, Matt, uh, for bringing up this topic. Uh, I think uh, we are still uh, in quite some danger, um, to be honest, uh, because I have looked at the um, uh, research um, data of the Deagle.com uh, uh, corporation. I don't know wh whether you're familiar with that. That is, a, um, you know, they are collecting information from, from all over the world on... Uh, on uh, uh, economy, finance, and military, uh, and so forth, and also development of population. And um, we had this uh, subject a few years ago uh, when Deagle was uh, releasing uh, information on 2025. And looking up uh, this data, which you may not now not have at hand, but uh, I can give you the link in the chat room um, uh, in the in the wire. Uh, this Deagle.com uh, has a list of countries. I think it's over 290 countries worldwide. And I looked at the population developments until 2025, which is in seven years. And you look up uh, the United States and um, Europe, some of the major European countries, and they are losing a lot of population. Uh, let's yeah. say, for instance, the U.S., it's minus 227 million uh, in, within seven years. And um, the same is with France. They are losing 28 million. Um, the Germany is losing 53 million. Italy is losing 18 million. Austria and is a, a small country, 2.6 million. Switzerland even 
almost 3 million, Spain 21 million uh, in the UK or, or England is, is losing 51 million. So this is very horrific. You could say, well, it, there will be a worldwide uh, catastrophe taking place. That's why I looked at uh, some of the major uh, big um, uh, populated uh, countries like Russia, like India, like uh, China. Uh, they are about uh, even, so they, they are not really changing a lot. So that means there is a population uh, reduction planned because they are receiving this information from their particular um, country. Uh, there's a population reduction only taking place in the Western countries, especially U.S. and Europe. Isn't that uh, a bit worrying? Um, do you want me to chime in or does someone else want to chime in? No, go ahead, Thomas. Um, it would have been before 2012. It's not now. You know... Uh, to me, from an, an overview point of view, with the knowledge that I have, uh, we've already won, but we have to step up into the roles and claim our victory. And that's something uh, we, because of the interference, we're struggling to do, but we're making giant progress. Now, that particular program, uh, if you noticed, uh, everything was going to stay the same in the East and wipe out the West. That, that's not a population reduction in essence. It's telling you that the uh, transfer of energy and power is going to the east, or it was. It's not no more. Again, that should have happened in 2012. The Federal Reserve should have moved to Beijing. They've already built the building, but it didn't, didn't take place because certain ones that were involved in the system decided we're not going down this path. And, you know, they, they put all, all kinds of fear, fear out in the NASA documents, asteroids are coming to hit us, and, and they've tried, and they've all been blocked. Uh, nobody who's coming to crash into us, we've been here now for the last 10, uh, 15 years. Uh, this pandemic, uh, uh, H1N1, Zika virus, Ebola, you name it, they've tried them all, and they've all failed. All of them. Uh, and they will, all their bigger plans will continue to fail. Eventually, people will start uh, seeing it from an overview. And yes, all these documents uh, uh, can look uh, fearful and scary. It did to me when I was reading it a long time ago until I got in with certain uh, people and groups uh, where I realized after 2012, I knew January the thir January the first, two thousand and thirteen. I did a piece in uh, in uh, on the Facebook at the time. We've already won. It's a matter of humanity stepping up and claiming the victory. You don't like politicians? Fine. Let's put people out of the alternative media in as politicians, because most of us are a lot more balanced than the rest of the population. You don't like bankers, let's put alternative media people and spiritual people in charge of the banks where it becomes fair and transparent. Mm -hmm. So we have to step in uh, to their roles because, you know, if the cabal step down at midnight tonight, everyone celebrates, but then everyone realizes after the party's ended, what are we going to do? Are we going to sit there arguing with each other or are we going to start put, going into the positions? that's going to drive us forward as a species. But this is what the overall overview uh, thing is about, is the survival of our species. Because they were going to wipe it out. Except they uh, came up against resistance, people who were clever, just as... Uh, and I've outfoxed them in many ways. A 16,500 year control system which has collapsed in and on itself. And we've all seen the evidence, the financial, uh, the pl big plans failing, the transfer of everything from east to west. It's all failed. Why? You know, because they're finished. Well, I would uh, agree with you that if, I mean, that their plans are failing and it's to yeah. efforts like ours uh, yeah. that, that occurs. Absolutely. Um, as far as the new old orders, odors, uh, agenda to 
depopulate the world. If you go to my website uh, and go to the web links page, yep. um, you you can't find it there now because someone removed it. But I will be posting <laughs> it just after this this um, yeah. after the show. Yeah. The Rockefeller Foundation New World Order plans for uh, scenarios for the future technology uh, technology of uh, international development, and it talks about how they they would have liked to use in two thousand nine. Uh, the Ebola virus as yeah. the vehicle to um, terminate a lot of humanity. And I will be posting that as soon as the show is over because that is good information. And that's yes. to, to me, I can show you there somebody's wicked plan to exterminate uh, the population. It's just not hearsay. I'm giving you something that came out of the Rockefeller Foundation. Okay. So yeah. I'm giving you evidence. So yeah. uh, go up to my website, nwodor.com, web links okay. page after the show. It'll be there. But we'll just say that what they want to do and what they can do are two yeah. different things. They yeah. might want to do that, but can they do it now? So no. we, that has to be considered. Now, I want to go over to Michael and give Michael a, um, uh, a chance to talk about the, his thoughts on the Middle East. Michael. Yeah, <clears throat> well, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, what's going on over there, I see it, of course, in my view, <laughs> on different uh, kind of levels of, uh, you know, what, what happens in the background. And yeah. I see, uh, um, you know, as Steiner says, you know, um, politics is is a selection of evil. And uh, I think Thomas was talking about what's the difference between Hillary and 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 uh, and Donald Trump. I would say different shades of black. And yeah. um, so to speak, uh, what happens in the Middle East is a distraction to stop our spiritual development, to create to create fear in our existence. You know. I don't have the, you know, this kind of spiritual sentent, sentimentality of, you know, Middle Earth kind of coziness. But I think everybody has the right for happiness, be content yes. with one life and to fulfill their lives and to be helping their human brothers and sisters. And thus it makes you happy. If I can help someone, uh, then I, it makes me feel happy because I contributed to their well-being. And that's yeah. that's where our own uh, sense of existence is actually lies. And I think these uh, cabal is completely dis they are completely di distracting us from that from those goals. And that's the real ball game, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I feel pity of the the existence of this uh, human of human existence because that's what happening. We have been completely kidnapped by those soul snatchers which yeah. are completely putting us on a different level, on a different planet, so to speak. And we have to return and go back. And um, you have a brotherly economic life and a free spiritual life, which is we really have practice. We have to practice free thinking yeah. uh, with unbiased thoughts, with, uh, with no hidden messages, with no hidden kind of, uh, uh, you know, manip manipulation and all those kind of things. And that's, I think, would give mankind a real golden future. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is, uh, again, I'll go to the overview. This is kind of what's playing out. Um, uh, it, it's up to, um, my, uh, I rarely get um, annoyed or angry, but my eye at the moment is not necessarily at the cabal because um, People themselves buy into this system, the slavery meat suit, and everything's external. Money is becoming you God, and uh, as religion failed, money ramped up, and you know if people started doing the inner work and this dealing with the shadow sides, then this planet would change overnight, and you can put whatever control system in your life, it won't work because you, you're thinking and acting uh, a different way on a different vibration. And that's the key to everything. If the whole planet suddenly decided, I'm going to deal with my inner trauma, I'm going to deal with what's blocking me, I'm going to deal with the programming I've been uh, handed. It doesn't mean to say you have to accept it. Mm, this planet definitely. would ch literally change over overnight because uh, then we you would realize who and what you are 
and no one, you would never put anyone above, above yourself on this planet or anywhere else. I think also, I'd say, Thomas, that one thing that we've said before, and we've talked about this, is what value, and everybody has to ask, you know, ask themselves this question, what value is your integrity? Can I buy, can the elites buy your integrity for 10 million? Matt, Detlev, Michael, can, can if, if they came and knocked at your door and say, listen, lads, I will give you 100 million if you just walk away. I mean, you have to put a value on your integrity because that's very important. Can you be bought off? Because they will, as Thomas has said before, and if you look at the five things, they, they will look at you as the alt media and as they do. And they go, right, OK, how can we what makes this guy tick? What, what can we get him on? What's his little weakness? It yeah. does he, is it the sex side? Is it a religious side? The politics? Um, is it uh, uh, there's two other things uh, there's the, the education system and the, the, the medical system is there no, something the, in the, there the, the five things I'll, uh, is uh, uh, sexuality um, finance alcohol drugs, oh, yeah. drugs. Uh, um, and religion religion they're, mm. the, they're, they're the five traps they, they put everyone in if you can avoid all them five, then you become a massive threat to them because then they can't divide and conquer you, which is uh, their whole goal is divide and conquer. Mm. You could also probably add race into that. Now, um, we're, we're, we're having this at the moment in Ireland. In Ireland, they have an abortion referendum on abortion and one half the camp is yes and the other half the camp is no. And it's splitting up friendships at the moment. It's the divide and conquer. Now, the way I yeah. see this, and I want to give this a mention because this is important, right? I have my opinion on this subject, right? But my opinion is nobody else's opinion or nobody else's business bar mine, right? And I'm not going, my ego is, does, I do not need to massage my ego by posting yeah. up stuff on Facebook, telling people what I'm going to vote and why I want to vote because I feel very strong about it, right? Because I know that that will divide and conquer people. Yeah. You know, people I know, and if they, if they say, oh, you're voting that way or you're voting this, this other way and they're voting the other way, that's going to cause tension. And the only reason why I'd post something like up, up on that, it's not because I'm, I feel very strong about it. It's partly ego as well. So I'm going to not say anything because it's nobody else's business what I no. think about it except me. Yep. Until we get proper elections, you know, people uh, like uh, uh, in America, it's do you vote Trump or Clinton? Yeah. And I said, you've forgotten your own input. That's what they've offered you. And too, in too many walks of life, we only get given two choices. And people have forgotten they have their own choice. And I said, I'm going to exercise the third choice. I'm not voting. Yeah. It's the same in the Matrix. Do you take the blue pill or the red pill? Now, they're telling you to take the red pill. But red means chaos. Blue means transformation. So yet again, people will go, well, I'll take this pill because they're telling me to take this pill. Me, I'm not taking blue or red pill. I'm taking neither. Be mm. And so I've exercised my own choice and my own free will. Whether other people do that is up to them. But if everyone takes a step back and forgets the programming of the duality, and this is what it is, is you choose A or B. No, you exercise triality which is your own real free will, and go, no, I'm going C. And that's what we have to be thinking. Now, I'm, I know yeah. we've 20 minutes left, but and I do want to mention this subject. Um, and just quickly, I just want a quick one around table um, to see if anybody has an, any information on it. They talk about these indictments that are, you know, 40,000, 25,000, whatever the indictments are. And people are saying on the internet, that there are planes flying into Guantanamo Bay with various people who have been extradited over there because of things they've done. But there's no evidence that I've seen myself that this is happening. 
And this could be just another rouge by the elites to thinking that we'll pretend that this is going on because people have a false sense of security that they're winning. You know, this is the psychology in the games they play. So just I'm going to put it out there to everybody. Has anybody heard anything or got any evidence to prove that these indictments are actually going through and people are going to Guantanamo Bay? Not heard a thing. No evidence. I've heard that that's occurring, but it's like that planet that's going to crash into us. It's not there that I can tell. No. Okay. The, there was a... Um, I got uh, asked for information, um, or I asked for information when there was there was a lot of furore on the internet that uh, there was a load of planes going down to Guantanamo, uh, and there was evidence of that um, on certain sites you can go on, uh, details all the uh, planes, numbers, and unmarked, of which they have uh, the, a lot of the unmarked planes. And um, it was a meeting of the cabal down there, not a transfer of uh, rogue elements. There is a possibility going forward that I know where that camp can be used for high profile individuals. Only a possibility. Okay. Detlev and Michael, have you heard anything on your end? Mm, I've heard about it, but I think it's, uh, it's um, a scam of the cabal, basically. I don't believe any word, a word of it, basically. It's only to divert our attend, to divert our kind of uh, cr criticism. What we have, um, I don't believe in it. Not a word of it. Okay, Detlef. Yeah, it's the same like the Q and uh, issue. You know, there are lots. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, in interesting information in there, and uh, but you know the proofs um, are. Uh, to, little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little well, the, not. the problem problem is is which Q and on. Yeah, sure. Because that's there's, there's more than one, and that that's the problem. Uh, there is right. bits of the truth from what I can validate. Bits of the truth in all of them, but that's how they pull you in, and then they give you the hook at the end of it uh, when, when it all falls apart. But there is certain uh, w what it is doing uh, is it's putting out in cryptic form, which again you uh, you can either look at or you don't. But what it is doing, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it from a psychological point of view, is there's a load of people now who are doing their own research. So they're giving out cryptics and people are coming up with all kinds of real good evidence if you look uh, outside of the QAnon cryptic. They're digging into uh, the interconnectedness of the pedo gate and they're digging into uh, who's been to uh, Iran and which politician uh, has been to this country and that country and why are they going there now like Hillary Clinton in New Zealand um, we have eyes and ears everywhere they think they can go whatever they like um, they'll they'll have a nasty shock one day but that uh, QAnon is at least getting people to do their own research which is uh, what I imagine all the panel will say don't believe what I'm telling you. Uh, you know, go look yourself. You know, um, indeed, that that's that's the key. I say that on my own show. Don't believe me. Don't be following me. I'm not interested in having the biggest and best show with the, the most of this and the most of that. All I'm interested in is we win this war, and it is a war, and people have forgotten that, and they're demanding this and demanding this proof and that proof and this document and this document. We're dealing in higher circles. You know, we can't even get the, the truth on basic stuff. So, uh, you know, so what is what is the truth and what is the proof and how how far do you have to go? Do I, if I give you a document on X, Y, and Z, does that prove it? Not necessarily. It depends on the individual. I think yeah, you have to use a lot of discernment and what resonates yeah. with you at the end of the day. And again, put it on the shelf. Now, something that I think we should talk about, because we are all involved in the alt media and we've all been doing this a long time. We've all we all have our individual shows and we, we do a lot of shows and we get the information out there. And Thomas, I'd like you to kind of just let people know what you've found out regarding the alt media and what's really happening. And the fact that 
the perception of alt media is that all these people are involved in it, but really, it's only a small handful of people who are actually, you know, doing what's supposed to be what needs to be done. Yeah. Well, this uh, you'll remember the conversation we had before my first show on OYM, uh, yeah. and I imagine you're skeptical, and that's that's right to be skeptical. But I did mention to do with the alternative media being uh, corrupted beyond all reason. I gave a low figure, which was high, but I gave a lower figure than what I knew. And I, at the time, said 75% was bullshit. Uh, pardon my French. Um, and people uh, didn't believe it. But over time, people have started seeing all the individuals are connected to certain covens. Uh, for the for the listeners who don't know about what covens are, the, the control structure, the Illuminati are four to five levels down. They're nowhere near the controllers. They are now because the uh, the levels above have all collapsed. There was the Draco, Stroke Mantids, and uh, the Greys who were the the top end, mainly the Draco. Then you had a group known as the Parents, who were a previous version of human who controlled the Covens, and the Parents went from 21, that was their control system, down to two, and it's possibility that there's no, no Parents left. If there's no Parents left, then there's no Covens left. The Covens are the dark magi magicians. They're the ones who distorted the mystery schools the original mystery schools, the original Illuminati was helping. And and then, you, and then you're getting down into the bloodline families, and then you're getting into what we know as the Illuminati. The Illuminati is now no longer. It's called the factions, and they're split up into uh, the Na what we call the Nazi group, um, the uh, Jesuit group, the Zionists, the Asians, and the secret societies, which is your P2 Lodge and uh, Scottish Rite, Freemasonry, and certain other groups of that. And that's kind of where, where we're at with that. And um, I've, I've lost track of the question. <laughs> well, no, the, the, basically, we were talking about the old uh, media. Because the the yeah. so, we said, that's why I, I asked a question yeah. about well, your integrity. How, you know, can you be bought off? So if you, you, well, you, you want to take it from there. Yeah, we've. Uh, we as a group, uh, and I'm connected to a larger group, have been offered uh, recently billions to step down. We told them to go and sling it. Because um, we're not being bought. I'm not being bought. I told you when I met this group, I said, don't be uh, giving me money to shut me up because I won't. Uh, and uh, you know uh, that I've been in a lot of financial difficulty due yeah. to the ex wife and whatnot. I could have easily walk, uh, walked away and and had uh, a nice lifestyle, but that's not sitting well on my conscience and not for a split second would I consider any amount of money to walk away. Because for too often, Right around the world, people have taken that seducement. That's why we got stuck in the in the system. And you've got to have the fortitude and the integrity to step up and go, you know what, you're not buying me off. You're just not. So I either carry on with this or they take me out. They've tried and they've failed. And I, I will not be shut up. I will not be bought off. And I will not... Uh, impinge on, on 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 others. It's all about every one of us stepping up and being the best we can. Not follow me. Follow yourself. That's what I'm about, and that's what I will stay until my final days here. Okay, we have about ten minutes, so I just want to go around everybody and get your take on the alt media and how you see it, Matt. Well. <clears throat> the alt media is us. We are it. Um, and it's not controlled by any one source. You may have big players in the field that are compromised, perhaps like InfoWars has been compromised. But it's the alt media is us. We're the ones on YouTube. We're the ones on the Internet podcasting. 
of blogging. So no, we're not corrupt and we're not, and, and, and our numbers are growing. Uh, I don't think there's a cabal controlling us. Um, integrity. Yeah. Uh, I can't be bought off and, uh, I can't be threatened, you know, but I do what I do because I think it's for the betterment of humanity. Now I agree with, uh, what you were saying, Thomas, that, you know, uh, we have to be our own individual selves and make our own decisions. And like you keep saying, Alan, be open-minded. Well, I mm. more consider it being objective. Okay. Mm. But Thomas's, a lot of Thomas's claims are without foundation. So I'm a more pragmatic person and I like to see, get my hands on things and see things, you know, like you, I read the Bible and it's, you know, you could, people could believe that it's really the truth. But to me, it's a fairy tale unless I can see for myself evidence. Now, I take the writings of like Eric and Donican uh, and his ancient alien theories. And that to me is more tangible than say something out of the Bible. So, you know, the uh, independent media, let's call them the independent media, is guys like us. And we don't have to have the same color paddles. But as long as we're in the canoe together, and paddling in the same general direction, I think humanity wins. So, Thomas, you and I may not see eye to eye, or you may know a lot of things that that are actually true, but without without you know more tangible uh, sourcing. I mean, you know, for all I know, your source could be uh, some guy feeding you a whole line of uh, garbage just so that you'd spread it on the internet unwittingly. But you know, uh, uh, that's besides the point. As long as we're in the paddle, I mean, canoe paddling in the same di general direction, I think humanity wins. So, you know, keep up what you're doing. And if people like your information, have at it. Well, that's it. I mean, we, we, we are entitled to uh, have our own opinion, but we try and work at, um, we can only give out the information that we have come across. And uh, sometimes the, the, some of the stuff is subjective. We, we can't prove it. It's important, you know, it just, or we might have somebody who, who will tell us the information and they say, don't say anything because I'll lose my job or I'll get fired or whatever. And we can't uh, reveal the person or where the information comes from for security reasons or for that person who trusted Absolutely. you with the information. So, you know, and that's just so, again, it's all about entertaining the thought, you know, saying, oh, that's it. We see it, myself and Steve have always said, it's not negative or positive information. It's just information. And then you deal with it, you know, and you think, OK, we we'll just put that on the old fence there. We put it on the shelf and then what we will do is we'll come back. And we'll deal with that, you know, and if, if it develops, great. If it doesn't, then fair enough. You know, there's nothing lost because some things that information comes out that you think, well, there's nothing I can do with this information. This is not going to affect my life or there's nothing I can do about it physically. So I'll just, you know, it's it's there as a, you know, that's great to know. But, you know, the day to day stuff that we can deal with on the show and people we deal with and expose on what's going on. I think that's going to, that's more important. Um, Detlev, uh, over to you on your take on the alt media. Yeah. I mean, you know, thanks, uh, Ella. Um, you know, the issue is that, uh, we can have this kind of uh, discussion on our United we start round table shows that we, um, as alternative media or new media basically can offer alternatives because the uh, matrix media is not uh, giving the opportunity to freely open uh, discuss uh, issues like we do. And um, a discussion, a roundtable discussion as we do it, is exchanging information, exchanging opinions. And uh, that is uh, and freely uh, without being uh, harassed uh, or being censored. So that, that is uh, very important for us uh, that we can give this uh, change to the uh, matrix media and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, we are getting more people. Uh, we're attracting more people and that is very important. Michael. Yes, it is. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking and, uh, you know, about, about uh, Alex Jones, whether he has been compromised or not. And yeah. uh, I, I suspect that uh, something, uh, I mean, it's not kosher anymore. And um, that comes to the basic black magician moral questions. You know, uh, can you uh, overrule your consciousness to order the spirits and order other people and infringe on the free will of other people for your own uh, personal benefit? Or can't you do it? Because if you do, then you give up 
your divine spirit. And uh, is that that's the price you have to pay. And I think that's an individual issue. You know, as I uh, said before, uh, during the break, that uh, Jake Morphonius, uh, for me, is much more uh, convincing than Alex Jones. I mean, maybe in the past, Alex Jones has been, you know, uh, authentic. But recently, when I observe his shows, they're all uh, biased. And I see different messages going on. And I'm, I'm not happy about this, what's go- what goes on over there. No, the um, I think what we can do, and we probably all agree that we can only we we can only deal with what we the information that comes into us. I mean, we we I'm sure we've all had information come into us, and we talk about it on our shows, and then in a few weeks' time we find out, ah, well, you know, that was wrong, that was misinformation. We went down the rabbit hole, and we 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 got yep. you know we got sucked into it, you know, and um and sometimes that happens, you know, and we're all learning. Um, and I'm sure if we go back and listen to any of our shows, even the United We Strike shows, and we go back in the information, and some of it was completely wrong, it was the completely opposite. But at the time, that's what we knew. I mean, that's the thing about, again, belief systems and uh, being fluid about what we believe. Is to, you know, we only know what we know today. Tomorrow could be different, and it might contradict what we know today. So. You know, That's so we true. have to, we have to be, uh, you know, um, we shouldn't be too um, attacking on ourselves and too critical of ourselves because we are people that are just human beings who have a moral conscience that feel that we want to do something to make a difference. And we're not professional DJs or TV presenters or anything like that. We're just people trying to make a difference. Thomas. Yeah. Uh, Jones was Cointel Pro right from day one. He's operated and paid for by Stratfor, which is linked to the Israeli uh, Mossad and um, what's the name of it? Not DARPA. Um, an intelligence agency. It's similar to DARPA. I'll remember in a minute. Uh, so Jones, you know, again, if you're looking for whether jo- Jones will put out a certain amount of information that's correct, it pulls people in. But if you overview it, you will see you know know, my question is uh, what people don't ask about alex jones is how did he he get into bohemian grove because nobody else did you only get invited in that tells you he's part of the system to me anyway whether other people uh, look at it that way is uh up to them so that that's the issue with jones now we uh, there there is uh elements within the community that are ran solely by uh, the CIA. They've been inserted into the community. Gaia TV is one of them. They're run by the Covens. You can find all the information that you want online on the, uh, the Jersey guy. He's one of the operating for the Covens. And it's, again, it's designed to distract you and follow blue avians and all that rubbish, uh, which, you know, when I, when I expose that, Two and a half years ago, no one believed. Now there's an awful lot of people who are seeing what I'm saying is correct. And it's, uh, but I said, tell, still tell people, uh, follow your own heart, don't uh, believe in what I'm saying. And our show has accountability because we allow, uh, or I allow, questions to be put in to the show. And I answer all the questions. And so there's an element of accountability. Uh, and Alan will know as he listens that it ha- has been times when I've uh, corrected previous information, I think two yeah. or three times on my shows, because that information was not correct. I'd mm. sooner, I'd sooner them have the truth than me hide the lie from my own personality, because I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the people having the truth. So Can I, um, uh, can I just... Into yeah. interject there, Thomas, because we're we're right at the mark now at the moment, and um, okay. we've got got a minute left to go. So quickly, I'd just like to thank everybody on the United We Start round table and quickly go around everybody to get your website links and your your um your radio links and everything else, so people know where to find you. So starting with Thomas, give us your details, Thomas. Uh, you can come listen to me on Spreaker dot com and. Um, forward slash user eight nine five five eight eight one and we have an articles website called think different dot the people's club dot org and we have the truth honor integrity facebook and the mewe so. brilliant stuff matt 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, you, my website is nwodor.com, nwodor.com. Go to the web links page, and I'll be shortly posting the <clears throat> Rockefeller Foundation document I got originally from their website, Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development. Um, there you can see how they were going, tried to, or plan to use Ebola as a weapon to depopulate the world. Um, I enjoyed this conversation, like I said, uh, you know, as long as we're paddling in the uh, same general direction in the canoe, we don't have to have the same color paddles. And I think we all win that way. I would uh, advise everyone to make up their own minds, be objective, be skeptical, challenge things. And uh, I think we all benefit if we remain that way. Until next month, death to the new world odor. Brilliant stuff, Matt. Um, and as we, as what I would say, we we'll, uh, we'll agree to disagree, and that's the manly thing to do until the information comes in and confirms it. De um, Detlev, your um, website and radio information. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, well, my website, our website is wakenews.net uh, and wakenews.tv. You will find a lot of English-speaking videos there as well. So if you're interested, have a look. And um, we will be back with our United We Start uh, uh, roundtable on June the 9th. So looking forward to seeing you then. Brilliant. Uh, the second Saturday of each month. And so, we'll, we'll, cool. we'll be advertising on the websites. And uh, Michael? Yeah, one thing before I go, I want to say that uh, why do we have to listen to these uh, installed evil bugbears instead of organizing ourselves because yeah. that is the, the human scope and the human uh, higher will that we organize ourselves we don't have to listen to those evil to those evil bugbears and that's actually what can save our future yes but uh, our e email address my email address is michael at wait news um dot net is it correct Detlef? sure okay, okay. Brilliant stuff. Well, so nice to be with everybody here, and uh, it was a very nice discussion. And uh, I hope it has uh, will bear fruit for everybody, and uh, and to our listeners, and as well as to our participants. Brilliant stuff. And uh, just for myself, and uh, you have myself, Alan James from Open Your Mind Radio. You find us at oamradio.com. Um, tomorrow night we're going to be speaking about, and um, believe it or not. Um, bras, ladies bras and cancer and the fact they cause cancer according to our guests who've done the research so check us out tomorrow night 7 to 9 GMT. For myself uh, good night and the team here at United We Start, uh, fight on and as Matt says, debt to the new world order. Over yeah. to you Detlev. Yeah, uh, rebroadcasting will follow so stay tuned if you want to listen to it uh, again or if you've just uh, tuned in so we will be back in June uh, on the night. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. We start fighting for freedom. A group discussion of activists, bloggers, authors, and other leaders in the independent media to inform and educate listeners on various topics. Join us the second Saturday of a month, uh, 10 to 12 a.m. Pacific time, 18 to 20 hours GMT. Sums as I write you this letter The days passed and days yet to come And the message of freedom The message of freedom I stand at the edge of the pages of history And lessons unlearned It feels like these pages are remaining unturned Boys, it's no mystery Children, I'm sorry to leave you this world In a state of disaster It was given to me in a similar state But I woke up so late in the game Now spiraling faster What is the question? Resist the advances of force and aggression And leave to your children the promise of something more Cause God 
is my witness, I'll be slain no more. Boys, listen close, for our souls may depend on the actions we take and the causes we choose to defend. So treat every man as a friend and live your in the divine processions Transform your world with your selfless expressions Reach out your hands In time we'll understand Children, one day I'll be gone And you'll have to remember these words And be strong as you cling to each other Your family, your faith than your father's song You've known this all along well, Freedom's the answer So what is the question? Resist the advances Of force and aggression And leave to your children The promise of something more Second-rate despot the world's ever known And for one simple reason The people have kept it alive And with no end in sight To the level of violence That men in high places Will sink for the silence The will of the people In you it must survive So what is the question? Resist the advances of force and aggression And leave to your children the promise of something more As God is my witness, I'll be asleep no more Well, freedom's the answer, so what? Resist the advances of force and aggression And leave to your children the promise of something more As God is my witness, I'll be afraid no more Is life so dear, a peace so sweet to be purchased with change from our necks to our feet Forbid this, Lord, I know